Through this video, let's understand the basics of Dwayne theory of Indian aesthetics. In Indian aesthetics, there are different schools that have put forward various theories about aesthetics. And among them, the chief schools are the Alankara, Rasa, Riddhi, Guna, Dwayne, Vakroti and Aujitya. Now from these, we already discussed the Rasa theory in the last video. In this video, we will be discussing the Dwayne theory, which is also an important theory regarding Indian aesthetics. Now, Dwayne theory is a semantic theory. That is, this theory deals with the meanings, meanings of words or sentences. Now, just as we discussed Abhinava Gupta when we were dealing with the Rasa theory, it's important to know about Ananda Vardhana when we learn about the Dwayne theory. Ananda Vardhana is an Indian aesthetic scholar of the 9th century AD. Now, he is the one who used the term Dwayne for the first time. According to him, in a work, there is always two kinds of meaning, that is Vajyartha and Vengyartha. Vajyartha is the literal meaning, what you understand when you know the grammar and the dictionary meaning of the word, that is Vajyartha. The Vengyartha is the suggested meaning or the hidden meaning. This is known as the Dwani. Now, according to Ananda Vardhana, the Vengyartha is more important than Vajyartha. For example, consider the sentence, he lives in the library. Now, the literal meaning of this sentence, he lives in the library, is already understood. That is Vajyartha. Now, the Vengyartha of this sentence, he lives in the library is that this boy that we are talking about or this man is a bookworm. He loves to read, so he is always seen in the library. This suggested meaning that we understand from a sentence is called Dwani. Ananda Vardhana discussed this theory, the Dwani theory, in his major work Dwanya Loka. This Dwanya Loka is divided into four chapters, and each of these chapters is called Udyodas. So there are total four Udyodas in the work Dwanya Loka. Now, in the beginning of the first Udyoda, Ananda Vardhana summarizes the purpose of writing this book Dwanya Loka. He says, Kavyasthama Dwanir Idi Budher Ya Samanyatha Purva. Now, this means that the soul of poetry has already been recognized. The theory of Dwani is the essence of poetry. So, he has understood that Dwani is the essence of poetry. Dwani is the most important element in poetry. Dwani is the soul of poetry. So, till now, we have understood that Dwani is the most important or is one of the most important schools of Indian aesthetics. And Ananda Vardhana is a very important figure associated with the Dwani theory. He described about Dwani in his major work Dwani Loka and he talks about Dwani. He says that Dwani is the soul of poetry. Now let's look into more details about what is this Dwani. So yes, as told before, Dwani is the suggested meaning. What else? Dwani is something more than the literal meaning. As we told earlier, the boy who lives in the library, the literal meaning is merely that the boy lives in the library. But the suggested meaning or the implied meaning is that he is someone who loves to read. So, Dwani is something which is more than the literal meaning. It depends on the whole poem and not just parts. You will understand this point when we discuss the example given below. That is, Dwani of a poem could not be understood by reading one or two lines of the poem. You can understand the suggested meaning only when you go through the entire poem. The whole poem has to be read in order to understand the Dwani, the suggested meaning in it. The next point is, implied meaning is not understood by simply knowing words and grammar. It is only understood by men of taste. Let's try to understand these points based on this example. Now, these are the lines from My Last Duchess written by Robert Browning. I hope you are already familiar with the poem. If you know the poem beforehand, you will understand that the suggested meaning in these lines 
is very different from what we understand when we read this line separately so here one of the characters of the poem the duke is giving orders to kill the duchess and that is what the poet means with the line all smiles stop together when the duke gave the command thus the suggested meaning that we understand from these lines is something more than the literal meaning depends on the whole poem and it can be understood only by men of taste this is what we call dhvani now only when ananda vardhana came up with this idea of dhvani that dhvani is important to make a good poetry a good poetry will always have this element of dhvani in it it was only then we came to know about this theory that dhvani is important so how was poems written before ananda vardhana brought this theory so if you look at the evolution of dhvani you can look at schools as the prachina schools and navina schools prachina schools are the old schools these schools they only focused on direct meanings in the poem there was no need to write poems with indirect or suggested meanings they thought of the direct meaning as the ultimate meaning but with time when the new schools or the navina schools came into prominence they understood that poetry cannot be expressed completely using words thus indirect methods of expression were asked to be used in poems now ananda vardhana is a big proponent during this time he was a major figure during this time the beauty of poetry they said depends on the importance given to suggested meaning or dhvani now even though they said that dhvani is important in poetry it is not necessary that every poem written during the time was written using dhvani so they divided poetry into three types one is the dhvani kavya or uttam kavya then the gunibhuta vyangya kavya and the chitra kavya the first type of poems is the dhvani kavya or uttam kavya this is the poetry in which the words and their literal meanings occupy a subordinate position and suggest some charming sense or dhvani so here the vachyartha or the literal meaning is only given a subordinate position the vengyartha or the suggested meaning or dhvani is given much more importance and this is exactly as they told a good poetry will have more importance given to dhvani so thus it is called the highest type of poetry dhvani kavya or uttam kavya is the highest type of poetry in gunibhuta vengya kavya dhvani is present but it is subordinate to the literal meaning so it is not as good as the dhvani kavya or uttam kavya and finally in the last type the chitra kavya there is no suggested sense at all there is no dhvani at all so this is the lowest kind of poetry the next topic is a comparison between bharata's rasa theory and the dhvani theory that we are discussing now in the earlier video we saw that rasa is produced by the combination of vibhava anubhava and vibhikari bhava so the main purpose of a dramatic work a play that is acted on the stage is to produce rasa in the audience thus what is stressed on in the rasa theory is whether an effect is created in the audience or not whether the play could produce happiness or sadness or any other kind of emotion in the audience or not rasa theory focuses on that whereas on the other hand dhvani is not focusing on the effect dhvani is focusing on the method the stress is on the method rasa is something that we expect to see in the audience whereas dhvani is something that is to be seen in the poetry the suggested meaning should be in the poetry only if there is dhvani in the poetry it will be able to create an effect in the reader now also rasa was something that was limited to a dramatic work a play which is staged whereas ananda vardhana expands it extends it to poetry too so in short rasa is the effect that is created in the audience whereas dhvani is the method of creating that effect so dhvani is needed to produce rasa 
Now let's go through the criticisms that were put against the Dwani theory. Dwani and Anumana or inference. Anumana means drawing inference from prior or existing knowledge. That is, we are finding out a different meaning from the sentence based on our own previous knowledge. For example, from the sentence, there is smoke on the hill. When we hear the word smoke, our previous experience is that when there is smoke, there is fire. So we assume that the meaning of the sentence, there is smoke on the hill, is that there is fire on the hill. The criticism here is that Dhwani is just the same thing as Anumana. There is no need to take a new word for the same thing. But if you know what Anumana is, you know that Anumana requires a middle term, a degree of mediacy. But in the case of Dhwani, in the case of suggestion, the degree of mediacy is not required. Thus, Dhwani is different from Anumana. Next comes Dhwani and Arthapadi or implication. Now, this is the knowledge from a set of circumstances. We call it circumstantial implication. When a sentence is uttered in a circumstance, the circumstance or context will decide its meaning. For example, the fat boy who does not eat during the day. The boy does not eat during the day, but he is fat, which means he eats at night. So this is the circumstantial evidence. So even though he doesn't eat at night, since he is fat, we are assuming that he eats at night. This is Arthapadi or implication. Now, what makes Dwani different from Arthapadi is that Arthapadi demands accuracy and definiteness. There is always a logical reason, accuracy behind what we assume. Whereas in the case of suggestion, in the case of poetic suggestion, it's all part of creativity, imagination and can only be understood by men of literary taste. It need not be logical or accurate. The next criticism is that Dhwani is same as Lakshana. Now in the sentence, the village in the river Ganga. In the sentence, we know that the village is not in the river Ganga. It is not possible. So river Ganga means river bank. We can understand this using Lakshana. If so, why do we have to use the word Dhwani for this? Now, here primary meaning is clear. River Genga means the river, the water, which cannot be applied in this sentence. So, we move on to the secondary meaning, which is the bank, the river bank, which can be applied in the sentence perfectly. Now, that is possible using Lakshana. Now, river Genga could also mean holiness or Purity. This cannot be implied by Lakshana. This meaning comes only from an emotional atmosphere, a cultural background that the reader or the writer shares. So this is brought forward by using Dhwani. The next criticism is that Dhwani is not actually required because the Abhida or the primary meaning of a word is enough. They say that there is no restriction to what a word can signify. When an individual word is put in a sentence, the meaning this word conveys is also dependent on the relation with the other words. So, its individual meaning plus its meaning from the relation to other words. All these meanings can be conveyed using the Abhida or the primary meaning of a word. Now, even in our day-to-day -day life, there are instances when we cannot express things completely using words or any language, we will have to use some gestures or music, sometimes even silence. So, suggestion need not always depend on words. Melody, music, gestures, all these suggest meanings. Hmm? The word, the primary meaning of the word or the meaning that it makes with relation to other words, it is not the ultimate meaning. And we also know that the meaning of the word changes with contextual factors. It cannot be objectively learned. And it can only be appreciated by men of taste. So these are some points that differentiate Dwani from Abhida. I have discussed few criticisms in this video. But apart from that, there are other criticisms too. For example, Dwani and Tatparivrti or the intention of the speaker. Now, the intention of the speaker 
will be very limited to what can be established logically it cannot give any other further suggestions the same way dwani and vakroti vakroti kundaga has included dwani under vakroti in his vakroti jivida so the same way many scholars have either tried to discard the dwani theory as a new theory or they claim that this is only a new name for something that is already existing dwani is the same as tatparivrti or dwani is the same as anumana or dwani is the same as lakshana so various criticisms have been put forward but dwani became a major theory in indian aesthetics the reason for a lot of criticisms would be that dwani is something that cannot be understood by everyone in order to understand the suggested meaning in the poem one should have a literary taste a creative mind to understand it the primary meaning could be understood by all but the suggested meaning is understood only by those who are gifted with some imagination and a sort of intuition and who knows how to recognize the essence of poetic meaning and without doubt we know that the greatest exponent of dwani theory is ananda vardhana according to him dwani is the soul of poetry and apart from ananda vardhana abhinav gupta also highly supported dwani theory so that's all for this video i hope that this video has helped you to understand the basics of the dwani theory